thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for the opportunity to talk to you about the uh, zero mineral story. And I've been here for, I don't know, 20 years I've been coming here and I get up and say the same thing each year. Well, this year it is an absolute pleasure to tell this story. Um, we've had a most amazing last 12, 15 months uh, since the discovery of the Andover Lithium Project. And as the title there says, what a difference 12 months makes. Um, and the reason is, is the discovery of the Andover Lithium Deposit. And we put out last August uh, an exploration target, which you can see there's 100 to 240 million tonnes at between 1 and 1.5% 1 and lithium. Now, an exploration target is a defined ASX term, which uh, has specific uh, criteria that you have to meet to be able to put it out. It's, it's a what you do just before you're ready for a resource. So on the back of that exploration target, we've been drilling the project, uh, the deposits, and uh, we'll be ready for putting out a maiden mineral resource probably in June of this year. So on the back of that exploration target and on the back of the, uh, the drill hole success we've been having and on the back of several takeover offers that we've received, the share price has just gone ballistic. Uh, 12 months ago, as Chrissy said, it was you know, 26 cents. Market cap was about $70 million. And today we're under takeover offer for a, a $3.70 or $3.65, depending on which route we go, uh, which is an incredible uplift in the, in the share price. And you can see there some of the big jumps that the share price made, and each of those jumps corresponds to either uh, exploration success, putting out some uh, you know, outstanding drill results, or on a couple of occasions there is the announcement of um, a takeover offer that had been received. So the company's done very well um, from a corporate point of view over the last 12 months. Uh, current share price around $3.65 is around about where the, uh, that takeover offer is sitting. Mark gives us a market cap of about 1.7 billion, which is just simply amazing and uh, incredibly uh, humbling to, to think that, uh, that the company that could be of, of, of that value and that size. You know, we, at the end of uh, December, we had about $117 million in the bank. We're currently spending between four and $5 million a month on the exploration and development activities that are ongoing. So the company is very busy. And you can see there the change of control um, offer that's in place now with an initial scheme of arrangement followed if that is not successful that it rolls, rolls straight into a takeover bid. Um, the two companies that are, are doing the joint bid is SQM which is the Chilean uh, lithium producer, uh, probably the second largest lithium producer in the world and the other party to the joint bid is Hancock Prospecting who everyone here would be very familiar with. And as you can see there that's, they are the two major shareholders in Azure at the moment. We also have Mineral Resources sitting there with 13% and Mark Creasy with 12%. So there's some very major shareholders up there. Over the last probably four months or so since the takeover bids were announced, um, there's been a lot of um, activity in our uh, share registry and probably 2,500 or so shareholders have completely sold out of the company. Um, and so <clears throat> most of those shares were bought by the, the uh, shareholders you can see on that table. And about nearly 90% of the shares are now owned by the top 20 shareholders. So the Andover project, which is what we're talking about today, is, is uh, the main focus for the company. It's a, a lithium project uh, now. When we first acquired the project about three and a half years ago, it was actually a nickel project and we've discovered two nickel sulphide deposits on it. And uh, things were looking very promising from, that, from the nickel and base metal side. It's when we lifted our vision up and looked a little bit wider that we observed the, uh, the presence of uh, lithium-bearing pegmatites out there, and so that was a game-changer for the company. So the usual disclaimer and statements, which is in front of you now and can be seen on this uh, presentation, which is now on the, uh, the Azure website and has been released to the ASX. One of the most important considerations for operating where we are and probably operating anywhere in Australia these days is recognising the traditional owners of the land on which we operate. And for us, it's the Nalama people who live and uh, are the traditional owners of the land around the, the area where we're working and in uh, Karatha and Roeburn, etc. And we do thank them for their cooperation and their consent to be able to work on that land. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do our exploration. We wouldn't have been able to make these discoveries if we didn't have that... Um, that really good relationship that we've developed with the Nalama, and for that we thank them. So the project itself, 
It's located in um, the West Pilbara region of Western Australia. So just uh, immediately east of Car town of Caratha and south of the town of Roeburn. You can see on the photograph there that it's uh, well heavily industrialised. There's a main highway that runs from the airport out through our project area, which is outlined there in blue. It's about 108 square kilometres. Also going through our project area is high voltage power line. There's a potable water supply pipeline, there's a gas pipeline as well, and plenty of roads and tracks through there. So incredibly um, heavily industrialised area, Rio Tinto's iron ore mines to the south of us, Woodside and Chevron's oil and gas offshore, process, uh, offshore facilities and onshore LNG processing facilities on the Burrup Peninsula. So this, this is a very strongly industrialised and infrastructure rich area and it, it will make the, uh, the development of the Andover project um, more straightforward than it might be, say, if it was out in the middle of the desert somewhere. So if we zoom in and have a look at the, uh, the project itself, it's made up of uh, three granted exploration licences. The red shapes you can see on there are the outcropping pegmatites we've mapped and, and some of which we've sampled. Um, it's it there within a swarm, a triangular shape wedge of about nine kilometres east-west by five kilometres north-south. Um, we've identified three main areas for our initial focus. And I emphasise initial because there's plenty of other mineralised pegmatites outside of those three target areas which where we've been active so far in the last 12 months. Drilled um, just over 100,000 metres in the last 12 months, 340 drill holes, and we've yet we've only tested 40% of the pegmatites that we've observed. So there is a very large potential here for a much much larger project. So I'm going to talk very quickly about two of the main target areas. Target area one. It's the first area that we went into. It was the first area where we had heritage and environmental approvals to go drilling on the pegmatites. Um, and so that was the only place that we could actually drill. So we took the rigs in there. Uh, we initially started with one drill rig in, in the beginning of March of last year, so probably just under a year ago. Um, uh, we had a second rig by the end of March. By uh, June, we had four rigs going. By August, we had eight drill rigs going. So we've really cranked up the, the exploration supported by the excellent results we're getting. Those pegmatites you can see outlined in, in red there are uh, outcropping or subcropping. They are extensive throughout that, that, er that particular area, so over two kilometres long of strike length. They, they dip towards the northwest quite, quite shallowly, um, but the important one to have a look at is that it's called AP11. It's in the middle there and it is simply enormous. It is a large, very large fat pegmatite that has got very strong lithium mineralisation throughout it. And uh, that's where a lot of our exploration activity has been concentrated over the last few months. And the reason why, these are some of the drill intersections that we've announced publicly. These are the ones where we've got over 100 metres of true width. And you can see, I think there's nine or 10 of these intersections on that slide there. We're getting intersection widths of up to 200 metres, but when you look at that from a, a point of view of what's the true width, where you're drilling perpendicular to the dip and the strike of the body, uh, we're getting true widths of well over 100 metres for lots of those intersections, and, and a really good mineralised grade as well, sort of 1.1 to 1.5% lithium. The importance about this is that, to my knowledge, there's no other lithium projects anywhere in Australia that have this many Intersection, tr intersections with true widths of more than 100 metres. This is quite remarkable and it's unique. And that's what makes this project so, so attractive. And we have a look at one of the cross sections. You can see there there's three pegmatites that are stacked. There's AP10 and AP12 are the upper two. They're quite narrow. They're probably in the order of sort of 10 to 30 metres wide, which in any other project would be simply fantastic. But here, they pale into insignificance compared to the AP11, which is, is a monster. You know, all of those intersections there, well over 100 metres of width, a very strong lithium mineralisation. So when you're drilling holes like those ones there and you're getting 100 metre wide intersections, the tonnes of this add up very quickly. And the initial exploration target for this target area number one was, and I'll just uh, jump back, and if I can do that, there it was 55 to 105 million tonnes. And we did that exploration target on the back of, uh, on August of last year, on the back of probably four or five months of drilling. Looking at what we've got now, we're very confident that we're going to be well within that range 
Um, I can't come up with any numbers. Uh, I'm not allowed to do that at this stage. But everything that we're looking at now is incredibly positive and uh, we're excited to be preparing the mineral resource which will be coming out in a few months' time. But AP11 is just is simply a monster lithium deposit. The other project, the other area where we're currently drilling strongly on is target area number three. Exploration target there, which we put out last August, was 25 to 75 million tonnes. This is, uh, once again, multiple stacked pegmatites, and they're drilled over a strike length for about two kilometres. And again, they're still open to the southwest and northeast. They're open down dip as well. This particular one's a little bit different from area number one. Uh, target area number three has uh, those stacked pegmatites, four or so stacked on top of each other, and they are all in that sort of round about that 30 metre true width range. Um, the, the intersection width is variable because we're drilling at different angles, but when you work that, work that back to being the true width, they're consistently between 32 and 38 metres wide true width. And they're like train tracks. They just go for a two kilometres long parallel and very, very similar true widths all the way along. Quite remarkable. And the grades in here are very strong. In fact, these grades are probably slightly larger than what we're seeing in target area number one. This is a, a representative of the um, AP4 pegmatite. Uh, you can see some of the drill holes that we've put in there and some of the drill intersections we've made. So as I just emphasise, you know, true widths averaging around about 35 metres, great, good lithium grades, shallow dipping, which means that when you, you're, uh, you get a lot of tonnes per vertical metre, which is uh, very encouraging from the mineral resource point of view as well. So just to uh, recap over the last year or so, you know, from the discovery, from the first drill holes we put in in the beginning of March of last year through to now, less than 12 months, 300 and something drill holes, 101,000 metres of drilling that's been done into the area, $31 million of ex exploration expenditure on this project. You know, we've, we've come up with an amazing discovery. And notwithstanding, we're not stopping there, not resting on the laurels, the exploration is continuing. We are out there identifying through mapping and sampling more mineralised pegmatites throughout that project area. We are continuing to drill, we will continue to drill for exploration purposes. Um, and we're also continuing to drill for the resource definition to put into the um, mineral resource estimate uh, in the middle of this year. But we're also doing development studies. So we've got environmental baseline studies underway and that's been going on for at least two years now. We've got heritage surveys being done, we've got community relations being looked at, mining studies, metallurgical studies, everything we're, we're doing is, is going, we're going as quickly as we can to build the Andover project towards a, uh, the knowledge, to gain the knowledge in which we can make that investment decision as to whether to build a mine or not. Now, of course, as you all know, we are under takeover, so um, that may well change going forward, but certainly from uh, our point of view at this point in time, it's business as usual, and we accelerate this project as quickly as we can. And we expect to have that MRE in the second quarter of this year in the scoping study by the fourth quarter. And if I might just, sort of arm wave a little bit here, and I talk a little bit, sort of what I talked about when I received that uh, award, the Craig Oliver Award, earlier this morning. Um, there are certain things that need to be achieved to have success, which we have learned over the last 20 years at Azure Minerals, and that's to have a vision. That's to have a vision as to where you want to go, what you want to find, and you need to be able to convince the board to support you with that. Well, what, fortunately, over the last 20 years, as you always had a very supportive board, there's been a, obviously changes of directors along the way, but notwithstanding with those changes, there's been continual support for the exploration visions and strategies that we've put together. And we've implemented those strategies to chase that, that vision. And then we've built the right team there. You know, we've, we've given them the right tools. We've given them the right budget to get out there and do it. Yeah, given them some pointers as to the direction we want to go, and, and this is the exploration team I'm talking about, and I'm an exploration geologist, so I, I understand that. Um, we give them that, and then we say, go out there and have a look, and we just don't sit around and, and say, oh, no good. Perseverance is really important, so we see that as, as critical. And of course, good timing, because we couldn't have timed this lithium discovery any better, uh, so we're very fortunate with that. And of course, one of the things that's not up on the slide there is good luck. And you need good luck, but even with good luck, if you don't have these other categories in place and working properly, all the luck in the world won't help you. As it happens, 
We've done all of that and the luck's come to us and, and Azure is in, a, is in a cracking good place at the moment. And we've got, the, with us, with the Andover project, and it says together building a very bright future in the Pilbara, that's true. This is likely to be one of the world's largest hard rock lithium mines sometime in the future. Thank you very much.